and we are back another development tour with myself Kaz from Property by Kazzy. Now today we are going to be looking at can you make money out of thin air because we're looking at airspace developments turning a space into six brand new three bedroom flats massively improving the building increasing the GDV and hopefully for the developer making a substantial amount of profit. So I'm James Goddard, I'm an independent real estate broker under eXp. What we're doing here is uh, six units, so six brand new new build units on airspace. So we've got a block of existing, 17 existing flats um, and we're constructing two new floors. So one mirroring the construction of the block, so block and beam, and then a timber frame on top of that. How's it going? You alright? Yeah, good, Kaz. Nice good to, to see, see you. you. Should, we, uh, should we take a look inside? Let's have a look. It's a big site. It is Look indeed. going on. So I remember getting a lot of initial info from you. Yeah. And I saw six flats, two additional stories, a lot of work, seven or eight months. For a lot of people, that's how long it would take them to build you know, a single story rear extension. How do you think the developers are able to do this so quickly? Well, I think it all comes down to good planning. Mm -hmm. You know, preparation is key. Uh, making sure that the site's got the materials ahead of schedule, mm -hmm. you know, so making sure like the, the sort of the payment plans in place as mm -hmm. well, you know, getting the drawdowns from the bank in, the, in an appropriate amount of time. Um, that's so important, making sure the, the site manager's on, 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 on mission at all mm -hmm. times, the project manager's filling him with all of the information. We've also on this site implemented a weekly and bi-weekly call with the client, mm -hmm. so we can make decisions on things like interiors and finishes very, very quickly. Um, and also, obviously, speeding up the delivery of the waste into the skip, that's key. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, is, that was great timing there. This is communal garden area, but there's also a communal garden to the rear. And, the, you know, realistically, the residents are quite pragmatic. They never use this space, you yeah. know, it's more just for the frontage. So being able to occupy it and be able to use it, you know, in our, from our point of view, that helps with the residents because it means that we impact less on their usable space mm -hmm. and their, the space that they typically use. Like, so if we were using the rear, you know, there's a few parking spaces back there, yeah. that would upset them, right? So instead, we come here, we fence it all off, you know, we make sure we keep it clean and tidy as much as possible. Obviously, it's a building site, so, yeah. you know, it is what it is. It's a working site. Um, but, yeah, we've been lucky to be able to use this. That's mainly, like, the office and, like, the sort of breakout area for the guys, yeah. you know, where they go and have their lunch on that side and our main cabin. And then this would be where we store a lot of our material. Um, and most of the material that comes in goes straight back up anyway, go, comes straight yeah. up here through the pulley, and then we sort of store it inside on the site. Yeah, and I think the good thing is also that because you've got that space, you know, your timelines are a lot faster. So it's a yeah. case of being in and out quicker. You're gonna have, you know, short-term disturbance, but in the long-term, I know we've already spoken about landscaping, create mm -hmm. a way nicer frontage. So when you're thinking about curb appeal, end values for the existing owners, yeah. you're creating that win-win. So should we go and have inside and have a look? Yeah, please, let's go. Let's go. So basically, Taz, mm -hmm. this is a very recent addition. Mm -hmm. So we've start, we've broken through yeah. um, almost mm -hmm. entirely to the floor below. Yeah. So we just got to go through the concrete slab there. Yeah. Um, but what we did, well, before we did that, we took the precaution of we built a suspended ceiling underneath mm -hmm. so that obviously any of the dust, any of like the, the concrete brick dust, whatever, it just captures onto the ceiling. So it means our actual, you know, our kind of removal of that waste is a lot more controlled yeah. because that's a, an operating corridor. So there's, there's residents that still live yeah. In this building, there's 17 flats here, and they've got to have the space as they have, as they've always had it. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't want to be impacting into their daily lives too too much. Mm -hmm. And having obviously building dust, you know, working on all of the sites, going yeah. to the sites, it's just a nightmare. You can't get it out of the clothes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it's just one of those provisions that we took. Okay. So, nice. I'm seeing some nice details. Yeah. Now, you know, I like some nice stuff. I like the recess, like, you know, recess lighting, which is nice. And we did that just for you. Yeah, I bet you saw, saw a couple of the videos, said, yeah, we're gonna make sure. <laughs> for those that have watched my videos before, you know that I like finish. That's key. So we're gonna talk about key areas of the properties. We always say kitchens and bathrooms sell mm -hmm. properties. Talk to you about the kitchen. Where's the kitchen gonna be from? So where you're standing there, you've yeah. got an L-shaped kitchen that's yeah. gonna wrap around, uh, Italian shaker style. Nice. Um, in the corner flats, they're going for a cashmere scheme. Mm -hmm. um, in the middles, they'll go sage green because they're being a bit more risque. Okay. Personally, I would have thought sage green should have been universal, mm -hmm. but 
you see a lot of cashmere in the development market yeah. in the new build market so play it a bit safe as well yeah um the quartz worktops cool okay nice okay yeah. island where we're standing here we so love, we love an island it's yeah. just it's sounding good already so okay. that's for the three bed corner units okay so the middles they're not going to get the island but they get the they'll get the l shape as it were siemens integrated appliances what we want is reliability and durability in the long term so we don't want to give somebody a flat that then in five, 10 years, they have to then start doing large scale works mm -hmm. to because something goes wrong or there's a leak or this or that. You know, that's why every bathroom has the, the, the kind of the low profile shower trays. Mm -hmm. We're not doing linear drains from the tile, even mm -hmm. though it's nicer, it looks great. It leaks all the time. You know, yeah. there's a lot of uncertainty with it. So either you're gonna be leaking into your flat or in that instance down below. You know, and the last thing we want to do is create those problems. And I think as a developer, you obviously have to be thinking about your brand, like your brand, who mm. you are. You know, you're going to put your stamp on the building and say, we did this. So you want to make sure it's something that's just going to be there, not just for a good time when you're selling, but for a long time and people can enjoy and live in for a long period of time. So even though we bought this scheme or Ralcon bought this scheme with the planning already in place, um, you know, analyzing the thought process behind the planning and why maybe Sutton Council was sympathetic towards a, a six unit, three bedroom and two bedroom scheme um, across two floors. Um, I would think is mainly because if you started to try and chop them up into smaller units, um, you're gonna put more stress on the local uh, amenities and the local services. Um, and also you're gonna have much smaller flats overall. By having the duplex, you each flat gets this larger first floor, which is mirrors the construction of the existing building. And then you have that more pitched uh, timber frame above, but it's your bedrooms. And you know, people are quite typically living in loft spaces quite a lot of the time with their dormers. You have dormers here as well. You've got a lot of flat roof um, space, but by having just a, a studio unit up there or a one bed unit up there, I think you'd have a lot more pokey living space and the flats actually wouldn't be that desirable. So a design feature to mention as well is there's gonna be glass balustrades. So within that frame there and then here as well. Um, and something that I mentioned downstairs, we've yeah. added these skylights. So you get that light at the moment, there's scaffolding tin roof on that. Yeah. So when that's removed, you'll have natural light pouring down into the lobby. So as you come into your flat and as well into your living room, you're gonna benefit from that extra natural light. And as you saw downstairs, you've got these enlarged windows. Yeah. So you're gonna be getting a lot of light coming in as well. So as you move in, you've got another skylight here. You've got a large walk-in shower, as I mentioned, the low profile shower trays, uh, floating toilets. Mm -hmm. So we're not gonna have any bases on them. And then, uh, you know, uh, vanity, and uh, the sink are gonna be, you know, they're, they're gonna be appropriate for the size of the bathroom, shall we yeah. put it that way. Um, and then you've got over here, a door that opens up. So you're gonna, we've added this feature of a Juliet balcony. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that'll be a glass balustrade there as well. Uh, we actually recently just redesigned this. So initially we had these two kind of barn door style, yeah. but because of the middle and the frame of the, uh, the window, it was punishing the light coming in. So we much prefer this like one pane uh, yeah. PVC door instead brings a lot of light in as you can tell. No, it's nice. I really like the design. I like the design. I like the fact that like, you know, I like nice things. So the fact that you've gone for the slightly more expensive concealed mm. system, floating toilet. Yep. I've seen the tiles downstairs. They're not kind of your sort of typical like cheap no, and cheerful. I mean, they're you, very you, nice. You've got them here. Yeah, here we you go. Know, they're large scale, uh, you know, Italian porcelain tiles, mm. 600 by 1200, um, you know, floor to ceiling. And as I say, you'll have the warm floor there. Um, you've got this nice space here for wardrobes mm -hmm. and then obviously enough room in here for a, the, the double bed and the dresses and, and whatnot. You, you can see the design already. So you can see sockets either side of the bed, yeah. switches, you know, all the things. I think that's one thing that I think kind of sets aside good developers actually not just being like, okay, I'm going to make a room, but yeah. think about how a room can actually functionally work for the end user. Yeah. And I think you know, a lot of the time when people are coming to buy properties, that's what they need to be able to do. Envisage how can I live there? Where are my clothes going to be? Where's my bedside table? Because I know I want my phone by the side of the bed. Yeah. And I think actually in this instance as well, because I'm the agent selling the site yeah. and selling the new units, I'm the guy that's found it. You know, I've been in the process the whole way through. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm in weekly and bi-weekly calls with these guys. I'm in the design uh, side of it as well. They've got interior designer, they've got architects, but everything that kind of all the high level decisions it's always a discussion it's not just uh you know this is what it's going to be it's like actually what's good james or mm -hmm. you know can you go and look at some other kitchens and give us some ideas and give us input my name is rao papala 
my role in the company is I'm the chief you know, executive officer and the founder of Procon Limited. The developments, the passion towards creating a quality living spaces with a commitment uh, to our customers and to the people who are working along with us in the Raucon as a journey to build the world with luxurious living. That's what the passion is. All right, but now to the bit that I know a lot of you have been waiting for, the numbers, because it's great for it to look great, sound great, feel great, but it's also got to be great in the pocket. So let's talk numbers. How much was this site acquired for? So circa 735. And what about your bill costs and other related costs? So sort of between 1.5 and 1.6 mil. And that's everything. That's first fix, second fix, that's your stamp duty, yeah, professional and that's fees. your seal, professional fees, all in. Mm -hmm. Only other consideration there will be your cost of finance. How much do you think that's going to be? Probably given the time frame, 160 to 180. Okay, nice. And then finally, GDV. Where have you targeted your GDV? So at the moment, we're looking at about 3.4 million. 3.4. So if that's on track, depending on exactly where contingency goes, you're anywhere from 800,000 to a million pounds in a great project, great space of time. Let me know in the comment section if this is a deal that you would do. We're going to be back real soon. When do you think you're going to be finished? Oh, now you're putting me on the spot. Looking at end of September. So end of September. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe so you get the notifications. Because did you know less than 30% of people that watch these videos subscribe? And the more of you that subscribe, the better videos, the better content that we can get for you. So like this video, subscribe, share, all that great stuff. And we'll be back to come and see the finished products. And hopefully we'll be in a place where we can sit down, have a little cup of coffee, and you can talk us through the project. And you guys can all learn a lot more.